we have fourth of july coming up just a big barbecue month or barbecue time of the year what is it that a cattle producer knows about grilling out or you know uh cooking meat that just a regular person wouldn't know or wouldn't think of i i'm not that much of a, a cooking connoisseur like i can handle a grill all right but i'm certainly not the best at it i I don't know. Like I'm pretty minimalistic on my seasoning because I'm like, I made this product. I want to taste it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we don't put anything on your stuff, and I mean like nothing at all. And you're the the you mentioned it briefly earlier about the aged beef. I had no idea that almost all the the meat in the grocery store it's basically turned right around. And even if somebody had told me that it was like, hey, we kill it and we deliver it to the grocery store, I'd have been like, hey, that's fantastic, right? Fresh, like, fresh as fresh as possible. And it just never dawned on me that hanging a cow for fourteen days could radically change the flavor. Yeah, and and there's niche places that'll do even two, three, four times longer than that, um, especially in specific primals but um yeah i mean everything we sell is aged at the very least a week and usually 14 to 17 days and that way it can it can have a whole different flavor profile the connective tissues can break down there's this whole enzyme process that i'm not smart enough to explain and uh it, it yeah it's just a whole different deal when you get out to the other end of it and, and a lot more um palatable tasty product so well and you can see why that would be so rare and why people would advertise that they have dry aged steaks i never knew but it's because it takes up so much space i mean you got to hang the entire carcass of a of a cow or and 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 refrigerate it and so, <laughs> so you, it's a limited amount of space but man the value of that is way underestimated I, I i don't think most people even know that that's a part of the whole beef process yeah yeah it's a big deal i mean if it, if, it, if it was done at scale at all the big processors they'd basically need like 12 or 14 times as much cooler space and, and that's just not economically feasible so yeah they uh they do as much as they can to to put it through as fast as they can and we're we're trying to make a very niche product that is very high quality so we need that calf to be at the optimum finish and have the right amount of aging and all that um and let's talk about that like so for people that don't know can you walk through the process of of a cow having a calf and then that calf going from being on a pasture to or whatever it is raise that calf all the way up to the point of slaughter yeah so i mean honestly we're pretty conventional in how we do it we just fine tune some stuff and, and try and pick them out at their optimum finish point. Um, so we're conception to plate on this Ring Brother beef program. Like you can AI them or you can natural breed them with a bull um, on usually on pasture, but there are indoor cow calf setups. So um, you breed them at 14 ish months, give or take, and try and calve them about two years old the first time. And uh, then they'll raise that calf for six months or so. You wean it. Um, typically, since we have very early spring, late winter, um, they're on pasture all summer. And then you wean them at the end of summer. And then in a normal scenario, they would go to a backgrounder, which is a guy that puts together all these small groups from these different uh, cow herds into larger groups that a feedlot can handle and then give them a couple rounds of vaccines, um, get them on feed so they're, they're eating more of a, a grain diet, um, and, and that takes some time to acclimate their gut to a, a higher energy diet. Wait, what does that mean? Do they get sick or they just don't eat it? Or how, how is that transformation process? Well, it, it's like going from eating lettuce all the time to Snickers bars in a day. Like <laughs> if, if, <laughs> if you just throw them right on the the high calorie finisher because with cattle their whole life they have different nutrient requirements i mean when they're small they don't need as many calories for maintenance and then when they're big and especially if it's cold they they need a lot for just maintenance 
Um, so your calorie intake is going up their whole life. And so is your, your dry matter intake of like, like the, the amount of feed that they take in that is dry and not water. Um, so yeah, that all the stages are basically just ramping them up through that process. Um, and I don't know why they're called backgrounders, like the people that get them after you wean them, but I guess it's giving them a background that people can look at and say, oh, these guys have had a couple of rounds of vaccines and they're set and ready and to. Do, do you mean what you were saying when, when you made that analogy about the Snickers bars, like salads to Snickers bar? Is that how you feel about feeding cows grain? Um, well, like to a point, it, it uh, you go from a very high fiber content to a very high um, starch content um, because cattle in the U.S. eat a lot of corn and corn products. Um, so like our hot ration, by the time they are headed out, would be 62, 63 megacalories per hundred um, versus when they come in, it's in the low 50s. So, Wait, yeah. explain those numbers to me. Mega what? I'm not a nutritionist, but mega calories, it's, uh, it's, an in, it's a unit of measurement of energy, just a bunch of calories. So. so it's just like, instead of saying like a millimeter or a centimeter, it's just a different, uh, like, because if you tried to convert cows onto human kilocalories, it would be so large that you'd be writing zeros for no reason? Yes. Yeah. And when do you guys decide that it's time for a cow that has been on grain? That's when you're fattening them, right? The fatted calf? Yeah. So you'd start them on like grass for the first X amount of their life. And, and then you finish What is that percentage though? You're skipping over the interesting part. Like the, <laughs> because I think most people, when they think, when they hear you say indoor feedlot, they think the cow was born there and the cow had a calf and it was born there and they lived there their whole lives. Most people don't know that almost all the cattle in the United States are on pasture for most of their lives. But I, even when I say that, I'm only saying that as like a vague understanding. I have no idea how many months they spend on pasture. Yeah. I mean, I could talk about that part of it for like a day and I'm, I'm not always good at getting all the details in the right spot, but yeah, most cattle spend half their lives on grass because a lot of them um, spend their whole life before they're weaned off the cow on grass. And then they're also grown um, after they're weaned on grass as, as stockers. And then um, they'll go to a feedlot setting to finish and finish on grain. And, and that is meant to get the, uh, the fat on like the back fat and the intermuscular fat in them. So you can have that quality taste taste experience um at the back end but yeah i they do spend at least half their lives on grass typically um our cows since it's cold calve at some buildings that have corn stalks or straw for bedding and whatnot and then it warms up and they go out on pasture but um the vast majority of cow herds aren't in buildings they're out on wide open range land yeah yeah, people don't realize that a lot of the land in, in places like Missouri, right, there's people that might own 200 acres, and there is no chance you're going to put that thing under the, under the plow. It's either too rocky mm -hmm. or too hilly or too, too wooded or too whatever. And so people use that land and in order to cover the taxes or to cover the rent or whatever, they throw cows on that. But then there's not enough land there for those cows to be uh, grass fed all the way up to a size that they could sell it to the large lockers is my understanding. Yeah, plus there's not the calorie intake to get them to finish. Like I said, there's, they use more and more for maintenance, and, and you can finish cattle on grass, especially if you sump, supplement them a little bit. But to get that experience that we're, we're all used to, you really do have to finish them on a higher calorie intake ration. So, and, and that's what we do. And, and we talked a little bit about hitting the right finish. Like you can get them over fat where they're just like, waddling around and and can't hardly hold themselves up but that is not ideal <laughs> and not what we're going for so um once once they get to a certain level of finish where they'll grade average to high choice to prime it is when we're trying to get most of them to market 
Thanks for checking out this podcast short. If you're interested in supporting the podcast and becoming a tangibly better communicator, check out some of the classes that I've started to put online. Before coronavirus, I was traveling around the world teaching hundreds, sometimes thousands of people how to become tangibly better communicators. But now I've decided to take what I was teaching to large groups of people and put it online so that individuals that decided they wanted to make a change in their circumstance could do so by just buying a class for themselves. This class, Telepresence Professional Basics, teaches how you can use the microphones and the video cameras that you have, but turn them into something that makes you look and sound great. Many people in this new environment don't know how to sound professional, and so they just use whatever is there. With these tips and tricks, you can figure out where should I put my camera? How can I utilize light to make the camera look the best? And how should I think about sound and improving it so that way every time I speak during a meeting, people can hear exactly what I'm thinking and it's pleasant to hear my voice. These tips and the ways that you can think about how to prioritize getting better are all included in the Telepresence Professional Basics course. If you're interested, you can go to store.articulate.ventures or just check out the link below.